Hello and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to start section 0.3 about generating random variables from other distributions. Okay, so there will be four subsections. Today we are going to explain how one can generate discrete random variables. And in the next video, we are going to explain uh, some methods for generating continuous random variables. Okay. So let us start with discrete random variables. So as you know, a discrete random variable is a variable taking a countable number of uh, values with certain probabilities, p1, p2, etc. Okay, possibly it's infinite, as it's the uh, case with the... Um, Poisson random variables, but could be finite, okay? So, how to generate, now we know how to generate uniform random variables on 0, 1, but how to use that to generate a discrete random variable? Okay, very good. If you, as a uniform random variable on 0, 1, then consider the following random variable. If you, as between 0 and P1, because P1 is positive and less than 1. If, if U is less than P1, put X equal X1, the value, right. And if U is between P1 and P1 plus P2, X equal X2, and so on. So we partition the interval, actually, 0, 1, in a finite or infinite number of sub-intervals, the first interval being 0, P1, second interval, P1, P1 plus P2, and so on and then p1 plus p2, p1 plus p2 plus p3, right? Then what about this random variable actually, x, is discrete because it takes the values x1, x2, xg. But let us see with which probability. If, since u is uniform, then the probability that u is between two numbers, a and b, a being positive and b less than one, is simply b minus a because this is just the integral uh, from A to B of 1, or if you like, the integral over R of the characteristic function, uh, right, of, of U. So this is, this is by the, how it follows from the definition, right? Therefore, what is the probability that capital X equal X1? It's the length of the interval is 0, P1, which is P1. What is the probability that X equal X2? It's the probability that the uniform random variable is between P1 and P1 plus P2, which is exactly P2, the difference. And if you continue, you get P3, and then the probability that X equals XJ is the difference between these two numbers, which is just PJ, right? So X has is a discrete random value taking the values X1, X2, etc. with respective probabilities P1, P2, etc. Okay? So... This gives us the following algorithm. If you want to generate, here I explain this was finite, but it works with infinite actually, as was the Poisson case. Uh, so first, we generate a random number u, which means a uniform, a realization of a uniform random variable between zero and one. And we do a discussion. If the value generated is less than p1, we set x equal x1. If not, and u is less than p1 plus p2, then you set x equal x2, and so on, right? Actually, we can continue this algorithm, even if, we, so we can allow, actually, uh, an infinite number of values with an infinite number of probabilities. This will be the case of a Poisson, of Poisson or a value. And then, this number, the, the number will, so we, turn, we return x, right? Now, I want you to try to solve this exercise. Try to generate several samples of a random variable taking, taking just four values, 1, 2, 3, 4, with probabilities 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.4. So note that the sum should be equal to 1. And to check your answers with drawing an, an histogram. Okay, so I suggest that you do that on your own first. And in the next video, I'm going to solve this. Okay? So, now, 
Let us see particular cases, actually. So this is the general algorithm. So let us see how one can generate in an easier way a discrete uniform random variables between the values 1 and n, let us say. <clears throat> actually, we did that when we tried, when we uh, simulated the role of a die. Okay, so we just apply this now. A discrete uniform random variable takes the values, takes the value j is probability 1 over n. So all the probabilities are equal here, right? So if u is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1, this is the sum of pj, I, pi, i between 1, uh, 1 and j minus 1, and this is the sum of pi, i between 1 and j, right? So what is the probability that u is between these two numbers? It's very easy to evaluate because now we have, this is a constant, so I can put it outside. And therefore, this condition is equivalent. So the sum here is just 1 over n outside times j minus 1 because you have j minus 1 terms. And the sum here is 1 over n times j, right? So saying that u is between these two bounds is equivalent to saying that u is between j minus 1 over n and j over n. So if you multiply by n, it's equivalent to saying that n u is between j minus 1 and j. And this precisely means that j minus 1 is the floor function of n u. Or if you like, j is the floor function of n u plus 1, which is the same as the ceiling of n u or the floor function of n u plus 1, right? And so, so what, what did we prove here, actually? We proved that x equal j, if and only if, j equal the floor function of n u plus 1. So what does this mean? It means that x is precisely this and, uh, uh, floor function of n u plus 1. Okay? So this function now, so if u is uniform on 0, 1, the floor function of n u plus 1 is a discrete is a it's a discrete uniform random value on zero on, on one n, right? And we did that with with when we took n equals six and this the case n equals six corresponds to the throw of a die. Okay, so now the the general algorithm algorithm that we stated uh, previously take takes a, a simpler form. So if you want to generate a discrete uniform random variables taking values in one n, we first generate a random number u. We know how to do that. And then we compute, we multiply by n and add 1 and take the floor function of the result, which is an integer now between 1 and n. Okay, and so, and then we return x. So it's very, very, very easy to do that. And we did it. We are not going to, uh, this is a particular case of the general algorithm. Okay, so we don't need to do a loop here because the, there is a very simple formula for that. Okay, next we specialize in Bernoulli and binomial random variables. Uh, so recall that a Bernoulli random variable with parameter p is a random variable which is a success with probability p and a failure of probability 1 minus p. You know that. Okay, so the general algorithm actually is very easy to implement in this case. Just divide the interval 0, 1 into two parts, 0, P, and P, 1, right? So it's very easy. <clears throat> I'm not going even to write it, but so, yeah, okay. So I, would, um, I did write it, actually. Uh, this is the particular case. So if the number, if, so we generate first a random number U, if this number is less or equal than p, we set x equal 1, and otherwise we set x equal 0. So we don't need to do really a loop here. Okay, now more interesting is the case of a binomial random variable. A binomial random variable is actually what? <clears throat> it counts the number of successes, if you like, in an experiment uh with n uh, steps right right so so the probability that x so the pro so we so for example suppose that we flip a coin n times and 
we count the number of heads. So what is the so and this would this is the this is the random variable actually. So what is the problem that we have k successes in an experiment with n flips? It's given by this famous formula C and K times P to the K sub because I have K successes and N minus K failures. Right? So we could do this actually. Uh, the general algorithm that we explained at the beginning works here. We just so this is PK if you like, P sub K. <clears throat> we can do that, but it's easier actually that to notice the following thing. If we have n independent Bernoulli random variables with the same parameter p, then their sum follows a binomial distribution with parameter np. So we have an alternative algorithm for generating a binomial random variable. So first we generate n independent Bernoulli random variables, x1, x2, xn, and then we take the sum. Very simple. So this is an alternative to the general algorithm. Otherwise, you can just do a loop, right? And I want you now to implement this in Python and to draw histograms and see what happens as n gets larger and larger. And actually, you may know what happens. If p is fixed and n tends to infinity, the binomial random variable tends in distribution to a normal random variable. So I want you to see that graphically. How is the convergence uh, happens, actually? But note that here p is fixed and goes to infinity. In a different case, actually, if n is large and p is small and np is moderate, then we get a, a convergence toward the Poisson random variable. Okay, so we have two convergence theorems here. Okay, we have one convergence to the normal and another convergence to the Poisson random variable, right? This is why Poisson is, has a lot of applications, actually, because it's an approximation of the binomial. And the normal also is, but it depends on the conditions. We have a convergence to the normal if P is fixed and goes to infinity, right? We, see, we shall see the other theorem later okay and now we go to, we come to the poisson random variable so this is the familiar formula so uh, a poisson random variable takes all integers or as values with probability e minus lambda times lambda i over i factorial okay where lambda is uh, the parameter of the distribution and it's positive of course so note that, not that the sum of all these probabilities is equal to 1. So here we are really in case of a, of a, of a random uh, variable taking, taking infinitely many values, right? But what with smaller and smaller probabilities, okay? So we can do, so the general theorem for generating discrete random variables applies here, but we can simplify it a little bit to, making, to make it... Uh, more uh, efficient, right? So if X is, follows a Poisson distribution as parameter lambda, if we compute the ratio PI plus one over PI, we get a simplification actually. We got the E minus lambda cancel, and lambda I plus one over lambda I gives lambda, and I plus one factorial, or I factorial over I plus one factorial gives give us I plus one. So there is a very simple formula for the successive values. Okay, so here's the algorithm, actually. It's just an adaptation of the general algorithm, but we have to do a loop, an infinite loop here, right? So here's the algorithm. First, we start with a random number, as usual. We start, we set i equals 0, and so p0, because we start with 0 here, actually, not with 1. So p0 is e minus lambda. And... We set a parameter f, actually, f should be what? f should be the cumulative sum of all the probabilities, right? And now we, we start a loop. <clears throat> if u is less than p first, which is f, actually, we set x equal i, right? So at the first step, if we start from here, if it happens that my random number is less than p, 
So actually, I put x equals 0 because I start with 0. And then I return x. If not, I update the parameters. So I update. Instead of p, I have now p, p1, right? Which is lambda p over i plus 1. But according to this formula, right? So this is the new probability. This is p1 now. And the cumulative sum is just I'm adding, uh, I just add p to f, right? Which is this one. And I update i, right? And I go to step three once again. So if I enter the loop, it means that x was not equal to zero. So I, I check if now r, u is less than uh, p1, is between p and p1, right? If it's true, I put x equal one and I stop. I return x. Otherwise, I continue the update. So now I'm in the third interval. So it's like I'm dividing my interval 0, 1 into an infinite small, small uh, intervals, uh, 0, P, P, P1, P1, P, right? So, or if you like, uh, P0, P1, P, P0, P0 plus P1, P0 plus P1, P0 plus P1 plus P2, because I'm, each time I'm adding the, the, the previous value, okay? So this is really a loop. It, and theoretically, it's infinite because x could take uh, very large values, actually, but with small, smaller and smaller probabilities. So extreme values will not usually happen in normal simulations. So in practice, this loop will finish uh, soon enough, actually. OK? Now, Python does not possess. This is a little bit old, oldish way to write a loop, actually. But this is how you can you will find it in books. It's very easy to adapt this if you don't have the go to statement. We just do a while loop. So while u is bigger or equal than f, update. Right? This is what we are going to do. So I'm going to scan all the small intervals of 0, 1. If my random number is in the first interval, I put x equals 0. If it's in the second, I put x equal 1. And if it's in the third, I put x equal 2, and so on, right? <clears throat> so I hope it's clear now. And I will end this video with, so I suggest that you do the following exercises. Implement this algorithm in Python, OK? And the next thing is to check the conversions of a binomial uh, random, sequence of random variables when the parameter n gets bigger and the probability parameter gets smaller such that the product is, is constant. Okay? We know from the course of probability that xn converts in distribution to a Poisson random variable. So I want you to, to see that graphically. Okay? So this ends uh, this first subsection on some discrete, very important uh, random variables. In the next video, I'm going to implement all these things in Python. And thank you for your attention.